key to increase, manage wisely is avoiding of debt. Amen. Avoiding. The Bible says, oh no man. Yes. Let's put the de- definition of priority. Priority. Oh, put the definition you just had. It just came on. Yes. The thing that is regarded as more impact important than others. High place among various things. Right to do something before other people. Right to proceed ahead. Priority. So the thing which is regarded as more important. So everybody has what he sees as more important. <laughs> what do you think is more important? All right? What do you think? Just as we said, every member, one, one bus, one member. For us, it's more important for buses to come to church than cars in this church. It's our priority. More important than others. In your life, what is more important? Find a land. Don't work at this bank forever. Be earning, 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 earning money. Find a land and start building by blocks. If you don't know how, the whole, that's how the churches. People look at us and say, we have money. No, it's what, it's, 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 what we, it's what comes before the other. It's what comes before the other. One time I, I met with some pastors. One pastor, you know, some pastors are invited, well, come and preach, come and preach. People like them to preach. Others have no invitation. Some of my pastors, no one invites them. Some of them, two people invite them. So I was standing with some pastors. One of them, he was always being invited to places to preach. And the other person, no one was inviting him. All the others, no one was inviting him. So I asked the one who no one invites, do you have a land? I asked, he has a house. He has built a house. The one who has been invited, they get dollars, travel here. He has even not even a land. You know, and you ask yourself, why? How do you manage the blessing that God is giving you? People have a lot of money passing through their hands. No one should ever say Ghana is poor. Ghana is not poor. Ghana is mismanaged. Completely. Oh, no, no. It's completely mismanaged from independence up to today. We have wasted oil, gold, timber, cocoa, everything, bauxite, whatever. So even when we discover this, discover this, we discover this, we don't even know whether it will be of any use. Do you notice any change in Ghana since we discovered oil? It's under President Kufo that it was discovered. I don't know if your life has changed or anything has changed in Ghana. We, we, are, now, we are now going into... Uh, different types of problems. And you see, every time we blame, during the time of Rawlings, we were blaming colonialism and neo-colonialism. Colonialism wasn't working. They said neo-colonialism. Every day there's a new word that is invented to explain things. Yes. So, the nations, can you say Ghana is poor? Look, I read in the news that Ghana is the largest exporter of gold in Africa. No, this is a country that is covered. I, I, I don't even know why they named Ghana Gold Coast. Because I don't know whether they knew how much gold we have. I don't know if they knew how much gold we have. Like the country is literally covered with gold from the south to the north and it's also covered with oil the whole country has oil a geologist from England he told me he has done research and whatever he told me the places where there are oil in the country I'm sure we will even be more than Saudi Arabia yeah in Ghana I myself have worked in the forest and I came to engine oil. Like the oil is like engine oil. It's coming from the grass. Yes. Myself, I saw it. They took, they said, oh, yes, oil. 
It's amazing. It's amazing. So you, are you saying that we there we are poor? No, what has been given to us? That's why I say church growth and the wise management of money. That's a topic. So it's your life and the wise management of money. Amen. And the wise management of what God has given you. So, which one comes first? Which one comes first? So, in the church, wisely managing the money. So, number three, how many points have I given you? Three, what is number one? The law of humility. Amen. Number two? And number three, the law of avoiding debt. Yes. I just want to, you to know that the Bible says, Oh, no man, anything. Romans 13, verse 8. All right. Oh, no man. Hallelujah. And then the Bible says, I will bless you and you will lend and you will not borrow. So it means it's a blessing to lend. And it's not a blessing to borrow. Amen. It says the Lord shall open you his good treasure. The heaven to give rain. And, and, and to bless all the work of thy hand. And when you are blessed, what will happen? And thou shalt lend unto many nations. And thou shalt not borrow when thou art blessed. Okay. Listen. No matter, you know, at first, you know, I'm, you know, I've been around since 1963. At first, every time I listen to the economic whatever people, when they speak, me, I don't understand what they are saying. How many don't understand when they give speeches? Raise your hand if you don't understand. When you don't understand. Oh, the whole church doesn't understand. Me too, I don't understand. And I'm telling you, when I was in secondary school, those who were, we were choosing between arts and science, and it was the top people who were doing science, and those who couldn't get science, mostly, not all, but a lot, most, they do arts. No, they can't do maths. They don't understand a lot of things. When you say physics, DY, DS, they, they don't get it. Yeah. Those are the people who do, I mean, they will go and do archaeology, uh, philosophy, linguistics, French, Spanish, law, uh, what? Dance, administration, uh, what? Theater arts. Afterwards, they become bank managers and they become minister of this, this and that. Then they'll be giving speeches. And we, the science students who were better, we don't understand what they are saying. Ah, uh, there must be something missing somewhere. Yes. And one day I read a book by a man who used to work, I think he used to work for either IMF or World Bank or something. And he said that he is accusing economists of creating words. And making economy, e- economics a, a science that it is not. And creating words and making it look far more complex than it actually is. And thereby misleading a lot of people. And he said that, for instance, it's just a simple thing. Somebody who sells pepper and tomatoes and somebody who sells phone and television, who will be richer? That's all. It said, it said industrialization. The ones who make something, they are richer than the ones who make nothing. You know? So, globalization and all these words, these are all new. They were not in the dictionary some years ago. But today, people have created all these words. 
and they make you feel you must borrow to prosper. I'm telling you that is a false and misleading doctrine and that you will be wise to trust what the word of God says. That do not borrow even from the bank. One day I went to a bank you know somewhere and the man was talking you can borrow this you can do this you can have this then I asked him a direct question when this happened what will happen would you then he said I'm sorry I'm not allowed to answer those uh, I don't know aha you are not supposed to answer this <clears throat> because you know very well that you are trying to trap me into an evil thing that one day you were saying I'm not supposed to answer well, you are giving speeches as though whatever. And I ask him direct question. When this happens, what is going to happen? What is this? They say, oh, sorry, that's not, sorry, that's not my, what about, look at Ghana today. Today, one dollar is five cities. Tomorrow is six cities. Tomorrow is this. Tomorrow is that. Another time is this. The money is becoming paper. When Ghana started years ago, we were at a, one dollar is one pound. That is not this new city, the first one. That became 10,000, whatever. One to 10,000. Hmm? One to 10,000. That's why all the old people in Ghana, when you ask them, they say million. They might say million. I mean, one million, two million. That's what they know. <laughs> Yeah. All the young people, the people in the church, people laugh at us when we say, We are no more. Ah, somebody came to Anakazo and he said, Ah, if Bishop Doug has got money and he has built Anakazo, why does he want us to come here? To come and see what? That's how people are ignoramuses. Yeah. But I'm just sharing with you. When I heard Bishop Oedipo saying the same thing, I, mean, I never heard him preaching. When I heard him saying this, he said, People mock him businessmen and say that you cannot do business without boring and whatever they mock him and all that you know but all that he's done he, he has no debt he doesn't owe anybody he's finished on his way and he's built thousands of churches thousands of schools thousands of hospitals thousands of what have you and doesn't owe one dollar yeah easy there are people who believe the word of god and some of the richest people in the world they don't borrow and they don't believe in borrowing borrowing has destroyed ghana borrowing has destroyed many nations yes borrowing has destroyed people's lives many people who went to america just on the salary that they had if they had believed god and not borrowed and rather humbled themselves and lived step by step that they will be multi-millionaires today. But because they went into debt, their whole finance and everything became bizarre. Yeah. You must remember that in the bank, there are people who are recruited. How many people have you got to take loans from us this month? It is their duty. The, the number of people you have got to borrow, you have to get maybe 40 people to take loans. Loan for television, loan for even funerals, they get loan, loan for death, loan for cars, loan for house, loan for everything. Yes. And you see, so all of us who have gone for loans, if there are 400 people here who have gone for loans from this bank, it means all of us are working for the bank, but we are unofficial employees of the bank because we all have to bring money every month. So we are all workers of the banks. Yes. So in the days of Shakespeare, what is the name of that uh, thing? The Jewish money lender. Merchant of Venice. Shylock. In those days, there were no banks. So it was the Jews who were lending. Well, the Jews believed that it's a blessing for them to lend and then not to. They don't borrow. <laughs> they will not borrow. So there were no banks, but there were individuals. There were no banks, but there were individuals. So when a crisis like how the crisis has come, 
Everybody will be angry with individuals. Mr. So-and-so lent us money and he's coming to take our house because we haven't been able to pay him. So there were no banks, but individual Jews in France, in Germany, in Spain, all over. That is why, <clears throat> if you read my book on the curses, that is why every few years they would rise up against all the Jews and sack them from their countries. The killing of the Jews in Germany was not the first time. There were several, several, they would announce all Jews in France, you are expelled. Kill them, catch them. It was because in the end, the Jews have lent money to so many people. They actually own the whole country. And they are there. That's what Hitler was against. The Jews owned all the things. There were about 5,000 lawyers, Jewish lawyers in Berlin alone when Hitler came into power. And he now made a law that Jews could not go to school in Germany. And all young people could not go to university again who were Jews. So today, bank has been taken over. It's lending of money has been taken over by organizations with glass walls. Many of them are owned by Jews. And they also give out money. But you see, they don't, they don't say it in, the, in that way. So when, when you go and borrow, you see that you start to go down, down. Why? Because you don't want to be humble and live in an uncompleted house. At least, I live in an uncompleted house. I live, I live in my father's hotel room. For three years, Dave, my first son David was born there, Joshua was born there, in the one room. Then I moved to an uncompleted house. I moved to an uncompleted house. And I stayed in an uncompleted house. For years I was building the house. There was no louver. There was no window. There was no, even the floor was not, I've not, there was no concrete on the floor. We put the furniture that we had, we covered it. No, nobody could visit us there. It was an uncompleted house. When I, was, when I go to start a church abroad and other places, I leave my wife in an uncompleted house. Even thieves came there. Yeah, they climb over and they enter the house for years. So if today I say I don't owe anybody, somebody goes, ah, you have money from this, you have this from that, you have whatever, and so on. But it's, like, it's also the way I choose to live. I didn't see that I need to be here, I need to be there. When I went to Geneva to start a church, I was staying in a hostel like a student. I was a student. I joined a common bath. We all bathed together. I was a pastor. I'm the founder of the church. We all bath. We say, bath in time, we go. We say, every cubicles. And toilet too. We go to cubicles. You queue when you go to the toilet. By Friday, the toilet paper is finished. The toilet paper will come next week. Oh, yes. That's how I started the churches. Yes. When I went to Geneva and started the church, some members came to me. They said, you can never stay in this hostel. We will not allow it. You have to come. I said, it's okay. I can stay here. And I stayed there and planted the church. For years, I was going and staying at that hostel. Oh, yes. Today, you won't come and criticize us. We are this, we are that, we are that, we are that, we are that. Slowly, 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 the wise management of the small, small, small that we have. And gradually, <laughs> gradually, we are where we are today. Oh, yes. So, you see me. One day, I visited a, a, a rich man. And then, it was time for dinner. So they brought his food. You know, they, when they brought his food, I saw that the food of this rich man, eh, I don't think it's worth more than five CDs. Because he has grown up saving money. And that's the food that he knows. So even when he's a millionaire, they still bring that same food. God, that is what he likes. Yes. But as for you, small prosperity that you have eh? you enter a restaurant you order a bottle of wine that is worth 350 pounds you have your meal 
You have to eat in this type of restaurant, this type of whatever. By the time you finish in a restaurant, 500 pounds. I personally, you see, one time I was talking to him, I said, it's not that I don't know riches. When I was a child, I was flying first class with my father. I was small like this. You see that I'm the only person in the first class with my father and maybe one other person. It's not that I don't know. Oh, yes. We, we were there. But Baba said, blessed, your, your land is blessed when your king is the son of nobles. And he, when he eats, he's eating because of strength, not for any other reason. So I'm teaching you and I'm telling you that death is an evil thing. All the arrangements they are making, all, none of them will work. None of the things that, nothing, because everything is fake. It's all fake. The whole world is based on fakeness. It's based on spending money you don't have. It's based on living at a level you are not supposed to live at. It's based on living in a house that is not yours. And driving a car that is way above your whatever. You are supposed to drive a used car or something small. But in your case, you must be at that level. That's the whole world system. You can go around like this. Every day you come up with a new word. You will either come up with a, a financial engineering uh, what? I don't want to even mention the current words because they are newly brought to Ghana so that you will not think I'm criticizing that thing. But what are the other words? Equitization. When you owe somebody and instead of paying, then they will re... Uh, uh, what? Amortization. This, you know, these are all, I mean, word salads. Oh, yes. So, brothers and sisters, don't be impressed. Don't be impressed. Humble yourself and believe in God. Yes. Believe in God. Be humble. Live a humble life. Yeah. Live a humble life. There's no need of certain things. When the time comes, when the time comes, right now by the grace of God, I don't know which car I cannot afford to have. By the grace of God. Even people will buy it for me. People will buy it for me. People that I don't, I will just order it and bring it. Yes. You see, I'm at the level where I can. But now because I'm used to Somebody was telling me I should change my pickup. I said, I am enjoying my pickup. Because I'm, that's what I'm used to. That's what I'm used to. That's the, that's the life I'm, I'm used to. Yes. It's what has made me prosper. Yeah. When Benny Hinn came, I picked him in my pickup. I put, I said, this is my car. Sit, please. Let's go. So the law of avoidance of debt. One day a bank manager came to see me. He said, we have a church desk for lending money to churches. But Lighthouse is not in our desk. We need Lighthouse to bless it. You, you, know, you know already. Yes. May God bless your hand eh, that you will not borrow but you rather be a lender and a giver. Yes. In Jesus' name. Oh, yes.